Um, words of wisdom from your good old buddy Matt. If you ever see a porta potty steaming, don't go in it. Nothing good is going on in that porta potty. That means that something bad happened in there right before you got there. Robert Oberst walked in there and he dropped a huge progress on some planning stuff for the resort today that I'm gonna let you in on. But first, let's fix this terrible camera that the audio like in probably 10% of the clips is super annoying, underwater sounding, robotic sounding, because I got a brand new camera. So now that I have a new camera, this is a Sony RX100 M7, which is actually the same one this one is. It's actually like my ninth one of these probably. That's, that's probably not a lie, I'll show you later. All we have to do is transfer your consciousness over to this one. Okay, here we go. Hold on to your seats. It's gonna be a wild, oh wait, no, it's actually really simple. Guys, hey, hey, hello, you there? Y'all actually look better than before. Hopefully I sound better than before. Giddy up partners, we got a resort to build. As you probably know, this is the last weekend of the year to get your football bets in. So we teamed up with DraftKings to bring you guys some awesome deals. So right now at DraftKings, any new customer will get $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5. That's $200 for $5, y'all. We didn't want the existing customers to feel left out. So if you already use DraftKings, you can place a bet on Super Bowl 58 and you get a bonus bet pack. Get a bonus bet in the amount of your initial wager. Max rewards vary. That's the, that's the cat, it wasn't me. What can you do with that 200 bucks in bonus bets? Well, you get in there and you combine multiple bets together at Super Bowl 58 for a chance at an even bigger payout. I know sports betting is not available in every state, but no sweat, you can still join in on the action with DraftKings Daily Fantasy for a shot at winning cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code MattCarriker and bet just $5 on any wager and you get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code MattCarriker only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. That could have been anyone. We're out here at the big range. Let's go over there. 10 feet tall railroad ties with 10 feet taller dirt on top of it, giving us a 20 foot tall berm. But I want it to be safer. So, update on the berm and the range is we are going to put telephone poles sticking up all up top. Basically to catch anything, if someone hits something and it bounces, just to catch it. So I think I want to get 10 to 15 feet taller on top of the center of the berm. So you can see that thing goes from there to there. Probably go a little bit further than it with telephone poles all up here. Which will look really epic. It'll give us a place to put a sign, um, you know, Desperado Range up there. And it'll also make this range just like as safe as possible. It's gonna be one of the safest ranges ever. Let me show you what else you've done. Let's go way back there. So at the last range day, we had this big berm built, all this area. So we had parking all over here, we had food over there, we had a big central tent here, all the tables, the whole lineup was all there shooting at this berm. But a lot more people came than we expected. It was packed here. So we thought, let's make more berm. So we cleared this area over here and started making a berm back over there. So this berm is gonna be about the same uh, size as far as how much ground it covers. We're not gonna make it as tall though. This is gonna be just, for all the crazy stuff, that'll be the epic tall range. This over here will be for pistols and lower caliber stuff on this side. But we'll have twice as much room for firing line. We're just dumping stuff here. That's all gonna be moved eventually, but we are pushing that back and slowly gonna start building up this berm on this side. So we have twice as much room for firing line, but also twice as much room for parking. So we're gonna keep clearing these trees back here because last time we ran into a big problem with just having space to park all of those cars out here. Okay, that's the big update on the range. The range is something we actually have a handle on. We know what we're doing. It's clear in my mind. The rest of the resort, very fuzzy. So when I first bought this place, 
My plan was to first renovate these buildings, the cabins. There are seven buildings back here, and they're fairly simple. They've got good walls, they have a good roof, so they haven't let water in, there's not a ton of rot. They need new windows and doors and fixtures and, yeah, cleaning up. But not a complete gut. So that's what I was thinking about doing first. Okay, maybe I get all these rooms done. All these cabins are built, and people can stay in them. But what the heck are they gonna do when they're here? You sleep here, and it was great. But then you wanna go play, and there's nothing to do. So you're like, okay, well, you know, it's early in the morning. Let's go get some breakfast. There's not a room to get breakfast. In fact, there's no food at all. There's no amenities at all. All it is is a nice room. So then I'm like, okay, starting at rooms doesn't make sense. So what if we start at a restaurant? Oh, dang it, that's right, our restaurant burned down. Shoot, I forgot about that. So not only would I have to build a brand new restaurant from the ground up, I also then have to learn how to run a restaurant from the ground up. Okay, that seems hard for my very first thing. Well, what if, what if we don't plan on making hotel rooms and restaurant first? What if we make more of Airbnb types? We could easily do that with this building. This was a four unit building before, but we could make like a two unit and put kitchens in. So we're actually on the second floor. You can see there's a floor down there. All underneath us, there's another floor. Um, then there's another like kind of bump up loft area up here. We could make this a two unit with kitchens in both units. So there's like big living space, two bedroom, two to three bedrooms. Actually it'd be like, yeah, it'd be like four bedrooms each. Could be a nice Airbnb, double Airbnb building, little duplex. Plus the view is amazing out here. Look at that, the river's full right now. It's so good. And the beauty with an Airbnb is you are in charge of your own food. You don't need a cafeteria or a restaurant or anything like that on campus. Like it's just an Airbnb. You go down and play in the river. This building would be the more family style Airbnb. And then these two buildings, they're three stories, would be kind of more couple oriented Airbnbs. Cause there's plenty of room in here for a big bed, a little living area, and a little kitchen for only two people. Nice size bathrooms. And then the view, fantastic. Yeah, it's so cool. I like the idea, and it's a way that I could start making money faster. It's before we build a restaurant, it's before we do all the cabins, it's before we have an operating resort. We could have just buildings that people rent out and come stay in for a few days, a week, whatever they want. There are a lot of pros, but there are also a few cons. The most obvious con seems to be like, what do people do while they're here if we have this open before there's anything else. The other main issue is once this is an operating resort, well then we put kitchens in all of these three buildings over here and we won't really need them anymore because then there theoretically would be a restaurant. And so we made Airbnb houses that we don't really need anymore. We wish they were just hotel type houses. So let's scratch that. People have been asking me for years, sending me tons of messages about getting married at Demolition Ranch. So what if we just built a venue first? <sighs> so there was a big building out here. It was huge and was their venue. It was where they did all of their big events, their indoor weddings, where they had companies come do their, you know, lectures and where they would have retreats and they would have family reunions. And it was a huge hall for this, a banquet room. So I actually went and we had someone draw up plans to totally renovate and expand on to that building. This is it right here. So the building before was just this central square right here. And then there was slab over here and slab over here, but this was all trash. So we destroyed all that and we just kept this and we kind of designed what we wanted on the sides of this. Then we got in there and started looking at the main part of the building that still looked good because the wood up top was all beautiful and not rotten, and then we realized the slab was built on sand, and it was only about this thick, 
And we were like, that's weird. And then we started looking at all the walls and we were like, these walls were not built right. And we realized <laughs> this was a barn that someone turned into an event center. And the slab was bad. It, had, it was already cracking and it was gonna crack more because it was not built right. And it was not built on a good foundation. The walls were bad. The roofing was all bad. The only thing that was good was the like trusses going through. And I was like, well, it seems pretty dumb to rebuild a whole building around trusses. So we knocked the whole building down because financially it made the most sense. So that entire building got leveled and we ripped up the entire slab because you need a good foundation to build on and it was a bad foundation. So our event center is gone. But I still have these plans. I actually spent a lot of money on them because we had a designer design them all out and his time is expensive. I sat with him a ton and we sat there figuring out exactly what we want. Um, this was going to be uh, not only a, a banquet hall, but it was gonna have room for, you know, a bride's room for her to get ready, a groom's room for him and all his groomsmen to be in getting ready. It was going to have a catering kitchen, which is like not a full kitchen, but to where you bring the food in and it's got prep areas for it. We also had offices up front and it was gonna be the main front desk where you come to the resort. So you're gonna drive straight up there, whether you're in a car and you're staying in a house or you have an RV. There was gonna be parking for RVs out front. That was gonna be where you check in. And so we were like, yeah, we knocked it all down. Let's go ahead and move forward on that though because we still need like a central office to check in. <sighs> right? Here is where it was. Here's our not thick at all slab that we broke out and we're slowly cleaning everything up. And this is where we were gonna build it again. And you come out here and you get in your truck that's pulling your big camper trailer and you go down our awesome road all the way to check out the river and you have the best freaking family weekend of your life and your kids are like, Dad, that was awesome. I love you so much. So now you're thinking, Matt, what's wrong with that plan? That plan sounds pretty good, right? It does, until you consider this will be the most expensive building that we ever build on this property, most likely. It's gonna be like, I don't know, 12,000, 15,000 square feet, and it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be the banquet hall. It's gonna be where the bride wants to get married. It's gonna have an awesome back porch on it. It's gonna have a beautiful front area lobby where you come in because that's the first appearance you get when you come to this resort. And so now I'm like, geez, the big con of this building is money. It's gonna be very expensive. The very first thing we build and we still don't have a resort. Everything is still rotten and trashed but we got this one shiny diamond here. So do we do that? Yeah. Let's review. Cabins first. Pros, easy, relatively inexpensive, and we have places to stay right off the bat. Cons, what the heck do you do when you have a hotel room without the rest of the hotel? And it's not like a regular hotel where there's like a restaurant next to it. We're out in the middle of nowhere. There's not food close. Option two, the cliff buildings, Airbnb style. Pros, not expensive, a little more expensive than the cabins, but not expensive in the grand scheme of things. And have places to stay right off the bat. So pros, we have income start coming in fairly soon. Happy guest. Cons, still the rest of the place is trashed. And do we really want guests here walking around while we're building everything else and the whole place is pretty much a construction zone. I don't know. Option three, venue. Pros, we keep it over there. People aren't wandering back over here. That is right in the front and we can chain link this off to where you can't get back to the rest of the resort that is under construction. And then we also have income instantly start coming in because we have weddings, events out there, RV, park is open, it'd be great. Cons, there's only one, and it's money. It's That's the most expensive thing we are going to put into this resort, and it will be the first thing we do, which is scary. 
have another option though. Option four. We first start on the ugliest building on the whole property. The old admin building. We ripped all the front of it off and you can see that it's just a metal building. You can see all the metal frame right there. This is the workshop area. It's in the middle of the metal building. And you can see up there is all the offices. You can actually see them all framed out here. This is the gift shop area right there. And then back past this wall is laundry. The metal building goes a lot further that way. But you can see it's a metal building, which is great because all of the metal framing is still perfectly good. While some of the exterior siding rotted away, some of the metal is all dented and ugly, the bones are great. The slab is great. And so what if option four, we just focus on this building right now and start working on making this good. Work on our offices up there, clean up all this junk, and then all of these walls that we don't really need, push them all out of the way, knock them all down. All these interior walls are not structural. Of course, this one's not, but this is not a structural wall. The structure is all in these, right? Not that, we could take out that whole wall back there. Let me show you what's back there. Nothing, nothing is back here. It's just goat poop and grossness. This is where they had all their linens. This is where they have their laundry machines, which are all garbage because there's not been a roof over them for a long time. This was all just laundry back here. Totally trash. Laundry, maintenance, Offices, let's go up there. Very inviting uh, front room here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Oh man, it smells good. All right, so this would be reception. And there's, there's my bikes. I forgot I put them in here. And there's an office in here. We try to keep all the doors closed to try to keep the sheep out so they don't keep doing this. We cleaned all this out. Then we left the doors open for a little bit. Sheep came back in. Uh, there's more offices there. There's more offices here for, yeah, staff, for desks to be all over the place. More office space here, another little room there. And then this was their gift shop area. Door to come in right there. More office space there. And then back through the back end of that is laundry. So option four is we focus on the admin building. Sheep are gonna go in there. That ought to hold them. That's kind of where my head is at, but I'm not sure because we're gonna be building offices and all that stuff. And then it's like, great, we have offices. Now what? We don't need to hire anybody yet because we don't have, you know, rooms. So I come to you today, Demolisha, for guidance. <laughs> I need help. I don't know what to do. I don't know what the right path is. I'm thinking this makes the most sense. Option four. But then, if we have this and nothing else, this is still worthless. But I do feel like it's a stepping stone that we, we have to step on to get where we need to go. So, another another like add to option four is we, we work on this while also working on cabins but then also we don't have food still and that means people are gonna have to drive to town to get food three times a day which isn't far it's 10-15 minutes but you don't want them to have to leave three times a day you want them to stay here and just have a nice relaxing time I don't know I really am looking for guidance especially if you know this kind of business um, or really if you're a business uh, minded person anyway where would you start because I want to figure out where to spend my time. I wanna spend my time wisely, but I also wanna spend my money wisely. Cause right now, as you can imagine, we have zero guests coming to this resort every day, which, believe it or not, means there are zero dollars coming to this resort every day. Right now, everything we're doing is spending, nothing we're doing is earning. I'd like to change that, ideally. I gotta figure out how to get there though. The land is beautiful. The river is beautiful. The buildings, all terrible. They're really, really bad. But hopefully in six months, or 12 months, or two years, there won't be any bad buildings out here anymore. And we can slowly turn this abandoned resort into a freaking beautiful Texas Hill Country resort once again. Thank you for watching. 
Thank you for your comments and suggestions. I really appreciate them in advance. I love you, and I'll see you next time.